want to get frisky, don't have to pay the price. Fill her up a whiskey pack down with ice. Roll her over and give her Coca Cola a dish ice cream. And lemon soda, then I take soap and water, baby, for to keep it clean. The cigar box guitars actually started a good 150 years ago and it emanated from the deep south, the impoverished, both black, white, purple, and orange. It was the impoverished. They had no money, but they had the music in them, as they say, and the reality is they had no money for the instruments. So being ingenious as they were, they took a pole, or basically a broomstick, uh, a cigar box, and a wire, from a screen door, put it together, and they had what is now known as a diddly bow. Cigar boxes were one of the first, um, they first made diddly bows. A lot of, a lot of people would take uh, a wire and put it on the front porch or wherever and put a piece of piano wire, or bailing wire, between um, two areas and start playing um, just, uh, you know, just hitting one note. Um, eventually, they figured out that you know you have to have it separate uh, with a 12th fret and be able to um, you know have it have a neck so you can have frets that you know it's easier to figure it out. So you know a lot of the first diddly bows were made cigar boxes. Um, there's just two string, so you could have you know the bass going, and then there's six strings and. Uh, Sometimes there's three or four strings and they would just make up different types of cigar boxes in the early days. This was an instrument for poor people who didn't have any money and wanted to play the guitar, wanted to accompany their voice with the guitar and they made this. This is a tradition, this is from a tradition that goes back, you know, well over a hundred years of people making, making their own instruments out of stuff that they found laying around. Diddly Bow is a one string cigar box guitar. Hence the name Bo Diddley. That's where it all started from. You know, there were a lot of these empty cigar boxes laying around and somebody got the idea, well, let's put a neck on it and put some strings across it. Uh, sure, they could have gotten gourds, but it was easier just to grab a cigar box and they realized that there was a lot of resonance in it. And it had a twang, a certain sound that cried, just like the words of the blues in those days forces you to play within the limitations of the instrument and return to, um, return to simplicity and rhythm. So basically, you know, that's really all you need. You just need, you need a steady beat and a melody and you sing against it and you sort of, you play a rhythm against it. The great thing about cotton pick and blues uh, guitars is like, th this, is the, the, this is my kill point right here. I mean, folks, when you want to get, you want to get through to the audience, you know, you're just going, all right, everybody. Everybody get up and dance. It's like ACDC, you know, so. If this was sitting on a stand next to me, everybody in the audience would be sitting there going, when is he going to play that weird looking thing? I get that from like Muddy Waters or Robert Nighthawk. You know, Robert Nighthawk was the guy that would just, just kill that. It's just, it's just really cool sounding. It's got sort of this droning, kind of mystical, almost a sitar-like quality to it that's, that brings you to a different place when you hear it. It's got this crude, rough kind of sound to it. And it's funky, man. It's like, it's just cool sound. It, it, it forces you to be more creative with just three strings. And I love them. Three years ago, a friend of mine contacted me. Um, this was a fellow that I've known for about 45 years, since the old days in the Bronx on the streets. And uh, basically he told me that he built a cigar box guitar. And I was fascinated with it. I couldn't imagine what a cigar box guitar was. But I knew if he built one, why can't I? So I looked into it on the internet and I was fascinated more with the history of it than anything else. And I started building my first one. Yeah, the construction of this is basically, it's, it's a cigar box. It's a real cigar box. I guess you could take any kind of box, and a jewelry box or a 
you know, a box that had screws or nails in it or something. But this is cool because as a cigar box, it actually opens up and there's all the guts inside of it there. The box itself obviously is a cigar box. Uh, I have also used jewelry boxes. As long as it's the same size and quality, it's amazing some of the designs you can come up with. Basically, you can see it's just a, a piece of wood that's, uh, that's put through a, through a cigar box. And then there's the, um, the pickups and the pickups and the volume and tone control. The frets are, are made out of finishing nails on it. Yeah, it's um, pretty much tone, volume and tone. I've got a, a 1965 Princeton amplifier. Uh, you could use any type of a, a low wattage type of an amplifier. Um, I prefer that through the PA. Um, I have a tube screamer on the top, and it's uh, got uh, it's, it's the tube screamer is down, so I get you know a good amount of distortion. Uh, sometimes I like to uh, have um, some tremolo, so I can get that real like swamp. It's a little bit too much on the speed, but right there. Basically, it's uh, you know it's all you need to sort of um, you know get down and start uh, start playing the blues. Anybody who really wanted to learn how to start playing the blues, if they picked up this before they picked up an electric guitar, they would play blues better on the electric guitar. Cigar box guitar festivals. All over the world they've been springing up, and it's not just limited to blues or three string or one string. Um, I've seen people now playing bluegrass at these festivals, regular rock and roll, singer-songwriters. Uh, well, actually, there's a cigar box guitar revolution going on now, and it's coming back stronger and stronger. Uh, we have local people here that are playing them for me, Steve Harvey. George Worthmore, uh, Tom McKnight, and there's a lot of them. And when they see them, they love them. And they're grabbing them up. And cigar box bands are starting to pop up all over the place. In fact, we have a little band that we call the Cotton Pickin' Blues Brothers. It's just amazing what these cigar box festivals are like. Everybody's just celebrating the cigar box. The great thing about this is, is that it's primitive. If you, if you start to like make it so it's perfect, uh, you might lose a little bit of the funk and the mojo on it. I don't know. You know, I, I kind of like the fact that it's, uh, that it's not perfect. But you know, that being said, the guitar isn't a perfect instrument anyway. It's always tempered and kind of out of tune a little bit and something like this even more so. But uh, you can't sound like this any other way. You don't have a setting on your Fender amplifier for cigar box guitar. Well, you know, you plug your telly in and turn it to cigar box. I mean, sure, I've got a Tysco Del Rey's, I've got a K, I've got Harmonies. They're, they're great guitars, but they just don't have this. You want to give somebody, give a guitarist something that he's going to have a lot of fun on, and he's going to pick it up and he's going to play it. Uh, the big question is always, who is really interested in a cigar box guitar? Well, surprisingly, lots of people, all different types. Meaning, for instance, there are musicians that play nothing but cigar box guitars. But there's a lot of people that buy it for the guy that's got everything. Well, what do you buy him? So they use them as wall hangers, meaning that in a den, in a library, they'll be mounted on the wall. They're terrific, terrific gifts and each one is playable. Thank you very much. Tom Picking Guitars, made right here in Sarasota. Oh, I get the last word. Anything you want to say about the guitar? Okay, cotton picking blues, cotton picking blues guitars here. They're just wonderful. So everyone that Steve makes is different, 
So you need to buy, buy a lot of them. So, so give a listen. What I need here is a couple dollars. <laughs> oh, talk about bloopers. <laughs> And it's, it's just amazing what these cigar box festivals are like. Everybody's just they're celebrating the cigar box. Okay. Go ahead and give me something else to add to this. Anything you want. This, is a this cigar box, box. D. And you don't have to finger it at all. The bottom line is once you strum it. This one's at it. <coughs> okay. How cool is that? So basically, the price is a uh, hundred dollars, five dollars now, and the rest when I catch you. <laughs> All right, here we go. <laughs> 